the end of this gospel, John's gospel was the last gospel to be written. He was the last one to be written. And he certainly would have known of the other gospels. And it's interesting the way he condenses in this gospel one paragraph what we hear in the gospel of Matthew about the last judgment. We had this yesterday at the funeral for Dave Cooper. We, I use that gospel about those who de do good deeds will rise to the resurrection of life. And those who do wicked things, those who do the wicked things will go to the resurrection of condemnation. All of that, that long gospel that we hear about when I was hungry, when I was in prison, when I was sick, John sums up in one tiny paragraph, one small paragraph. And that paragraph goes in there when they're trying, when, and Jesus is saying that today to the people, when he knows they're trying to kill him because he has now equated himself with God because he calls God his father. He says he's the son doing what the father does. And they don't understand it. They don't get it. They don't understand it. They don't, they don't, this resurrection from the dead of the tomb, that had to like blow their minds away. They must, can you imagine the eye rolling that went on in that crowd? Is he off the wall? When do dead people rise out of their tombs? You know, he, they must have thought Jesus was a little off the wall today when he's coming up with those things that will happen. But then, the one thing about that we understand from that whole gospel, when he talks about he and the Father are one, that he came to show us the love of God. People read about the love of God, like we heard in the first reading, where God says, even if a mother forsakes you, I'll never forsake you. God's promises, you know, I will never forsake you. And, you know, God gets upset with people. He got upset with the people wandering away, worshiping the cow, the snake, whatever else they came up with or created. But he always took them back. He always, he always relented. He didn't wipe them out. He didn't punish them. He always took them back when they re relented of their sin. He always was there for them. Always. Even in their sin, God was with them. Even in those difficult times, God never left. God was there. Just like parents. Just like parents. Even you might get upset with your kids, but you write them off. You write them off, forget about them. I would say probably not. Probably not. No, you don't. And Jesus today says, you know, the Father and I are one. And he came to show us. People could have read about the love of God in the scriptures, but now they had it right in front of them. Jesus was showing them the love of God through all of the things he did to make people's lives so good by letting people know they matter. You know, religious standards of that day may have made people feel like because they were doing things on the Sabbath to survive. They had to work on the Sabbath. Somebody had to do some of those dirty things on the Sabbath. And people looked and said, they're breaking the Sabbath because they're working. They accused Jesus of doing good on the Sabbath and it was wrong to do good. That's how crazy they were bent on their, their laws and their rules. But... Jesus came to show us the love of God and the way he fed people, the way he healed people over and over again, the way he made people let them know they matter. He came to show us that love of God right in front of their faces. And he shows us that. You know, Jesus, Jesus brought the love of God to light for people to say, here it is. You know, we aren't living back then, but we know the love of God is with us. You know, how often do we just take a moment to think about all the ways God loves us each day? The blessings we have, the comfort we have, where we are, our health, our life, our vision, our hearing. All of the gifts that we have are God's love to us. God loves us just like a parent and wants the best for us. 
want the best for us. When I hear people say, well, God sent that upon them, I'm thinking, would you send that upon your kids? Would you really? Who would send destruction upon their own kids? A, a sick parent, and there are sick parents. There are, we know that. There are sick people, but it's not natural. It's not the way of God. God wants the best for us. God gives us so much every day. You know, maybe Lent is a time when we just take time to stop and think about how much we're loved by God. Let us continue to pray.